this morning, uh, Aduro had a press release about partnership with Chill. Uh, Chill is part part of a Brightlands Camilla campus. And to talk about this, I'm here with um, uh, Yazan. So Yazan, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. So again, uh, another great uh, development on Aduro's front. And the nice part here is that, you know, it revives the relationship that Adura has with Brightlands. Um, so Brightlands and Adura has had announced uh, in 2021 that they're going to be uh, collaborating together towards, uh, you know, um, uh, towards helping Adura commercialize their technology. And, uh, you know, today it is kind of, a year and a half later, um, this this further advances the relationship with Brightlands Camilla. And just for the reminder of everyone, and we're going to go through the links. Um, a reminder for everyone: Brightlands Camilla is basically the one of the top ten hubs in the world for uh, chemical recycling. So, if you talk about plastic recycling. You know, the, this is one of the top 10 that you're going to find. Um, now, the, the part that I wanted to kind of touch on is if you go, uh, you're on the website of Jill. If you go down a bit and you kind of expand who Chill was founded by. And, you know, this is something that we want to, you know, I wanted to kind of highlight. So, you know, Chill was created with the collaboration with funding founders, including Sabek, VSM, and the likes. These are, you know, over multi-billion dollar companies. Sabek is a $90 billion company. Um, and this is, the, you know, this is a another endorsement to what Adura is doing. So you're seeing that Shell that is working with the multi-billion dollar players is you know taking a partnership with Aduro, and why is that significant? Because Chill, Chill's mandate is to kind of further the technologies of companies that have uh, something unique and different, um, so that potentially they can work with partners like the Sabix and and so on, which we've seen the example of what they've done with. Uh, re recently being selected by Shell. Now, if you don't mind uh, opening the uh, the uh, announcement that was before between Aduro and uh, and Brightland, and to sh to remind people why this relationship is such significant and why uh, Camelot has chosen Aduro. So in, in this, if you scroll down, you'll say you'll see that you know Camelot are not new to this business. They they as I said, like they are top uh, tier, and they have a page about Aduro. The they have said that after vetting the technology for twelve months, we have found that this technology has significant benefits to. Um, the existing regimes that are out there. So again, you're talking to people that know what they're talking about and they have vetted the technology. And now this is a further advancement to uh, that relationship. And now, what does Aduro get out of this relationship? Um, Aduro is gonna be able to uh, work with Chill in order to uh, support their commercialization efforts. Um, in the Netherlands, so again, a new jurisdiction. It will also allow um, uh, Dura to have access to researchers, um, equipment, the likes that, you know, with all the supply chain issues, with all that, these things are hard to get by. And, you know, getting, uh, getting engineers and researchers that are um, specialized in chemical recycling 
is not a simple task, you know. So having that kind of bandwidth from chill is quite a significant, um, you know, access for a duo. Um, I think the other thing that stands out to me, which you know, I keep speaking about every time that we talk, is how a duo views themselves in terms of, you know, their IP. So they're always, you will see that they care so much about making sure that the IP of any collaboration, anything that they do with a third party remains within Aduro. And that is something significant because they understand that the value of this IP is only getting bigger and bigger by the day. So um, th those are kind of some of the highlights, I would say. Um, again, uh, you know, uh, I'd say the, the other the other piece of the puzzle is you're not going to get this level of attention from chill and you'll see the the quotes and the press release and camelot if they don't really believe that this this technology is going to make it to commercialization so again it should this should um check several boxes for people uh one it kind of gives an update on bright lands and the Netherlands. Two, it gives a duro access to um, this great pool. And three, it will be a uh, it will further their efforts towards commercialization. So, you know, again, a an eye opener for a lot of people that are in the story and a lot of people that have yet to make that leap of faith. Now, for for those of you that um are listening for the first time i did an interview with uh, with lucy from uh camelot and uh i am linking uh, the, uh in the description of this video i am putting uh, a link uh to the interview that i did with her so if if you didn't listen to it i suggest you listen to it Right, uh, and I agree. I think I think Lucy is a very uh, big uh, supporter of Aduro, and I think the team at Brightlands are quite um, happy with the progress that Aduro is making, and as such, this furtherment of the relationship. Yeah. Uh, anything else you wanted to add about this press release, or anything else you'd like to add uh, about what? you know, what you expect from Aduro later this year? Yeah, so I think nothing about this press release. I, I think uh, for those that have listened to uh, Ofer and Emil's uh, interview with uh, Penny, um, you know, he highlighted that in the by the end of March, they will commission uh, R2 Plastics. What that means is basically you're going to be able to um, see the unit uh, put together in its location, um, and they're going to start uh, doing some testing. Obviously, but it will not be in a. In a I, I assume it won't be in a stage where you know people will be received to see the process. But you know, once it's commissioned, then we can start seeing some of these um, testing or feedstock testing agreements that they have piled up, whether it's Shell or you know, uh, Prospera and the like, um, there will be like three machines up and running. There will be the R2 plastics. Um, that he mentioned is going to be in March. I believe he didn't mention um, a specific date for the R2 HBU uh, and the flash on, but I, as I recall, it's Q2 of 2023. And um, we are, we're also expecting to see some further development on some of the other partnerships that they have so quite an exciting time to be uh, a part of the story i think you know in today's uh world at a market cap of 50 million us or sub 50 million us um you can't i don't know of that many opportunities that have got so many and continue to get so many validations from the from the hubs the names of the world whether it's you know brightlands whether it's shell whether it's 
uh, you know, uh, even the smaller players, it's just, it, it keeps on coming. And uh, I think what, what's going to happen is uh, once people see it in motion, a lot of people are going to like it. Obviously, you know, with the uh, with the liquidity in the in the uh, micro cap space being kind of limited, I think the uh, love and attention is still not there. But I think that will change course um, in the next you know few uh, few weeks and months. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much for doing this update. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mayush. Take care.